walk down here almost every day in the summer to watch basketball. And it was like real, real basketball. This place will be full and vibrant of you know people just being here and taking part. Everybody just was drawn to here. It's the, just the kind of a lower of Second Avenue. Mm-hmm. This park means so much to this part of town. Me and myself, I was never much of an athlete. I was more the hardest. I used to live up the street here on Second Avenue, running around here. And I told my wife, Monica Miles, God bless her. I was telling her how my intimidation was. Man, how am I ever gonna get this done? And she said, don't worry, if you're doing it for the community, you're gonna step in and help you, so. When I came down here, it was snowing and raining, and I sketched out the skeleton of this. It's coming along. I can't wait till it's finished. I can't wait for the whole park is finished. I can't wait till the community comes down here, enjoys themselves, and it feels good to give back. It always feels good to do things for other people. I mean, I'm hoping and praying that once I'm through with this, someone will come down here and they, they feel motivated and they feel like uh, they can accomplish anything. That's what I'm really motivated to do. Show you some artwork that's old. You have, you have stuff from here. Yeah, come on, come on, okay. come on. Let's do this. Now, this is what I'm talking about. This is a little can be forgive this basement. Yeah. I just wanted to show you. Yeah, this stuff you can see. This stuff is all old, but hold on. Let me. Uh, it's funny. I'll go through some of this stuff, and it's like, oh, I remember working on this, and it's like, well, so much artwork, Chris. This is hilarious. I feel terrible because I'm almost like a pack rat, but I'm an artist and I try to hold on to my artwork. I wish I had a, a, a better studio to, to, to keep my artwork and preserve it, but yeah. I'm doing the best I can to try to keep my work together, you know. So um, how should we go? So we'll start with the earliest work. Well, I, as a young kid, my mom, she kept us in church heavy. We were in church, I was literally from sun up to sundown. And, you know, as a little kid, you know, you can't just steal. So she used to have envelopes, tons of envelopes in her purse. And those envelopes were to mail bills. So she would take some of those envelopes and tear them and rip them open. And she's like, here, you guys draw in the pews, the church, just be quiet. This will keep y'all quiet, okay? And I would just go to town using pens or whatever. And it just sparked my interest. Even now, I, I see a blank piece of paper and I have to write on it. <laughs> like, I'm careful because my wife would say, hey, that's, that's important, that's, our, that's your son's birth certificate. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I, you know, but yeah, this here, um, I wonder if I pulled this out, I wanted to show you this. Yeah, this, is, this is old too, this is from high school. We call ourselves a little rap group, whatever you wanna call it, but, yeah. but they're the second half crew, we still, we still got it going on. I'm, I mean, the playground, that's where we hung out. Yeah. You know, and, and over here, this is this is the actual blueprint of, of the um, the mural. This is what I started with. You know, I just took regular paper, taped it together, and just and came up with the concept. And, and, and I showed the uh, Beaver Falls Reunion Committee, and I drew it on the computer once it was done. And they, they approached you to do Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did you think when they did that? I was honored. I, th- I think I'd been upset if they didn't ask me to do it because I grew up down there. You see, I got Second Avenue. I got shirts. It's in my blood. Look, I got the tattoo Second Ave right there. Oh, let me see that. Yeah, you see that? This was like, this was probably two and two two and a half years old. Beaver Falls Tigers, you know. That's where I grew up. That's where I was raised. And, uh, and I don't care what anybody say. You know, they might think it's like over the top or something, but it's love. You know, that's where I grew up. Second half, you know, that runs deep. The year of 80 and 81 was truly the hardest, hardest years of my life as a young kid. So 80, we our house caught on fire. We lost everything. And we had to move in with my grandma over um, and over Harmony the Wellings. So that was 80, and then the next following year. My dad, he, was, he used to ride his bike to work. And he worked down in uh, 
Rochester at Valvoline. Okay. And um, yeah, he collapsed on his way coming home from, from work. He was in shape, but you know, he just had a health problems with his heart. And um, he passed away of a heart attack. And then my dad was only 49 years old. And my mom had to shoulder the load of becoming mother and father. Those years were some tough years without my father coming up when we were younger, me and my, my brothers. And um, my mom did the best she could in raising us to be men. And um, she, she was there every step of the way. And, and I didn't ever want to let her down because everything was on her. She had to pay all the bills, work a job, take care of us. And um, she worked at Westinghouse and was Cutler Hammer in Beaver. She worked there for over 40 years. And she took care of her mother. When her mother got sick, she moved in with her mom and took care of her. And my mom was just one of those like pioneers, man. I can't say enough about Laverne Miles. With my art, when I started, there was nearly no roadmap for me. You know, especially being a young African-American. Oh, this was trial and error. You know, I didn't have anybody coming up that could point me in the avenue of, oh, you should go here or you should use this technique or draw this. But I just relied on my passion and God putting people in my life. All my friends always believed in me. You know, they knew I was always into art and comic books. They supported my work. Anytime I drew something, they were always there like, oh man, that is so sweet, man. Keep going, keep going. You know, and, 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 and even to this day, they always know that this is my passion. What does it feel like to like be able to do something really close to your home? You, you know what? It feels, I, I tell you what, I, I know, I just love this area. I love it. I love Beaver Falls. People don't say that a lot, but I love it because of the family, my friends that I grew up with. It is an awesome feeling to be able to still be here and contribute to this, contribute this world to this part of town as a kid, riding my bike all around here, playing with my friends, and like it wasn't supposed to be on these railroad tracks, <laughs> messing around down here, and, and um, it's a blessing to do this and still be able to be here and contribute this artwork. And they always believed in me. All my friends always believed in me. They always believed in my art. They always encouraged me. They never, every time I drew anything, they always encouraged me. That's why I love Beaver Falls. That's why I love Second Avenue. With some art, I feel so like free. Like the freedom of just being able to be myself. Like anything I draw, that blank piece of paper, I could put whatever I want on it. Like no one, no one can tell me I can't. It could be a blessing to people. It can inspire people. It's a gift that I'm able to give to others and people around me, you know. And another thing is, I don't think I can stop even if I wanted to. And then um, what I, I was going to add the pink over here and bring that side. See how I, I brought the, per, the blue, I the ancillary colors that we were talking yeah. about. And it's, it'll all just layer on top of each other. Yeah. And it'll get there. It yeah. just, I'm anxious because it's like, man, is this going to work out? And it is. So. Yeah. But <laughs> you guys putting that color on there is really bringing my like, like, wow, this is, this is really, this is really coming together. Yeah. I know. I'm getting so excited, like. Yes, it is Cousin Karen. He is in his zone.
No, I think that's a uh, super dope that they're doing that because I, I mean, me personally, I lived a block away from the playground. That was that was where I grew up, uh, seeing so many games, so many different people down there, and it was like real, real basketball. Yeah, it was competitive. You had people coming from you had all Hoopers. over Pittsburgh area, everywhere to come to Second Avenue and play in the big the t- tournament, the tournament every yeah. single year. Man, it got it used to get a little hectic down there. Right, sure did. But it was, I mean, it was super prideful, and everybody came to represent their cities. You know what I mean? It was huge. It was huge. This was growing up, man. This is how we did it. Second Avenue. This is here, and it's still here for the youth to enjoy. And they refreshed the court, and everything okay, looks fresh. Care. We're not just doing it for ourselves. No, we're doing it for the community. Right. This isn't to make me look good. No. This is to like this make this is to make every man look good. good. Have some Love pride. It. Have pride in what we're gonna have some goddamn tournaments down right. this way. Right. This summer gonna be popping. Have pride in what we're about. But this is where we this is where we at, man. This is back to the back to the roots. Second Avenue playground, man. Second Avenue, that's what it's like. And people like this, we second half, second, second half. half. Because there's love in Generations it, of it too. Right. We here. This ain't no, no just messing around. Mm-hmm. And that's how we roll, y'all. Got to. He was me, you, Todd, Goober. Corey. Mad Love, Goober, Goober, Corey yeah. Brooks. Yep. Greg Thomas. Yep. Malik uh, Fritz. Malik Fritz, El Hashabaz. Chris Howard. Chris Howard, Hell House. Hell House. We at Hell. Yep. <laughs> That's how we roll. Yes, sir. All right, one love, Spool. Hey, we love you, man. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah thank you, man.